Hey, welcome to this week's edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we've got Skidoo's 900 Ace Turbo tearing things up in first burn, and then we've got Global Star along for a spot on the show, and we head back to West Yellowstone to tell you about that experience. So don't even think about going away. STV is brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. Ford F-Series Canada's best selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. In the 80s and 90s, West Yellowstone in Montana was the go-to destination for any serious snowmobiler. But then with access restrictions in the park and other riding areas coming online, its popularity kind of went downhill. But now, it's back as a place to ride. Back in the day, West Yellowstone was the bucket list snowmobile destination. I remember as a kid watching snowmobile videos on VHS tape featuring deep powder, buffalo on the trails, and sleds riding up to Old Faithful, which put this place on my bucket list. Then something changed. Riding restrictions came into effect limiting access in Yellowstone Park. These restrictions included limitations on where you could ride, even the type of sleds were restricted, with only four-stroke, low-emission sleds even allowed inside the park. And then you were restricted to guided trail tours only. At the same time, mountain riding was exploding with manufacturers building better and better powder sleds along with other riding areas quickly being developed throughout the Alpine in North America. All of this conspired together and West Yellowstone seemed to fade into the limelight. Even for me, because I thought this destination began and ended with the park, but I was wrong. And I realized this the first time I came to the area for snowshoot. For us in the media for the last decade, we all make the trek to West Yellowstone for the annual snowshoot, an event where all the manufacturers get together with their next season sleds so we can ride, evaluate and gather the photos and videos we all need to produce the magazines, internet content and television shows for you, our readers and watchers. Yeah, I know, it's a pretty good gig. To be able to test the latest and greatest sleds from every manufacturer all in one amazing place to ride is something we all look forward to. Now, it's a pretty grueling week with lots of pressure to get the job done, but each day is another best day at work type of day. And if we tell you any different, we're lying to you. Most of the time, we're pretty focused on riding and accumulating the media we need, but every so often we get to go out on an extra long loop while testing a new snowmobile or maybe it's a strategic, whoops, I got lost for a while in the Alpine, and that gives us a chance to not only enjoy the sleds, but also the whole area around West Yellowstone outside of the park boundaries. It's these experiences that inspired me to tell you more about the area because Yellowstone really is a special place to be. And it all starts with the town of West Yellowstone. It's a cool place and snowmobile friendly is an understatement. Riders have access to the town on sections of roads that are left unplowed to get you to and from its services. Now there's unique hotels and restaurants along with gift shops for souvenir hunting and a great nightlife for apres snowmobiling. And you can't forget about the Yellowstone Historic Center with its displays on the history of the park and the animals of Yellowstone. 
They even have a grizzly bear and wolf discovery center where you can get way closer to these huge animals than you'd ever want to be in the wild. West Yellowstone is a tourist town, no doubt, and it's used to huge crowds that flock to it each summer because of its proximity to the West Gate and into the park itself. So in the winter, it's more than capable to keep up with the snow crowd. And if you're the type of person who doesn't enjoy big tourist crowds, winter in Yellowstone could be for you. And even though it may not have the crowds, there's still all the good stuff to do. Snowcat and snow bus tours into the park are available one after the other, or there's guided snowmobile tours on approved rental machines if you wanted a more open air experience. And each will get you into the park to experience Old Faithful and the animals, not to mention the bragging rights you get by saying you've ridden in Yellowstone Park. The town and park alone are a great experience for anyone, even those strange folks who don't consider themselves snowmobilers. But for us who know what snowmobiling is all about, the riding areas around West Yellowstone are as epic and cool as the town itself. Catering to tourists, this extensive trail system is extremely well-groomed and can take you from the town right to the Alpine. There's not much for services out there, so if you do crave snacks or warm beverages, you'll need to bring those with you, and fuel, it's only available in town. But you'll have no problems getting out and back from wherever you want to go on a single tank. Rentals are also plentiful and include everything from tour-up tours right up to the latest mountain sleds. Now guides are also available, which I highly recommend anytime your skis point to the alpine slopes. A guide can not only keep you safe, but they can get you to all the good spots, ones you'd never be able to find on your own. We've been here a number of times and are slowly finding all the little honey holes to ride in and the best trails to shoot on. In fact, practically all the footage you see on STV for the first burn segments are shot in and around Yellowstone. This is also the place where many of the manufacturers shoot their product videos and do photography. So chances are, you've seen more photos and video from this area than you realize. This alone should tell you how good this place is to be. Now one thing I've never done is actually ride inside the park. There never seemed to be enough time to do this part of the Yellowstone experience when I've been here for snowshoot, but I have a feeling I'm going to solve that problem pretty soon. Having great trails with alpine access is something that's fairly common. There's all kinds of places for that experience, but there is only one Yellowstone Park and the town of West Yellowstone that makes this area unique. The experience of West Yellowstone is not only great for the boys, but this area is perfect for a family getaway as well. If this place isn't on your bucket list of snowmobile destinations, it should be. Every so often snowmobile engines come around that get us talking here at the STV and OSM offices and for 2019 Skidoo's got a couple of them. The first one is the new 600R but the second one is the new 900 Ace Turbo which is Skidoo's first entry into the performance turbo market. And in sleds like the Renegade XRS here it means the 900 comes in the wide body chassis which makes this sled the best looking Skidoo on the snow. Everyone around here wanted to experience the turbo for themselves to find out if, as a package, it made sense. In a sled like the XRS, the nameplate has got some serious history behind it, but in the two-stroke engine family. And we wanted to know if this four-stroke could compete with its two-stroke brothers in the same chassis. Or in sleds like the Enduro, where the 900 Ace Turbo and the 850 E-Tech can both be found in what's essentially the same chassis. We wondered if this 900 Turbo option is a legit one. Or is this simply existing as a marketing ploy aimed at building Skidoo's four-stroke market share? This is a shot over the bow to other manufacturers and their performance four-stroke turbos. And I believe this machine is meant to keep those Skidoo faithful, ones that simply want a performance four-stroke turbo from looking over the fence to those other manufacturers who are already building them. After riding the Enduro 900 Ace Turbo and comparing it back-to-back -back with the 850 E-Tech, this is a legitimate performance snowmobile allowing Skidoo customers to have their cake and eat it too, whether you want that cake iced in two-stroke 
or four-stroke turbo icing. Back to back, the turbo can hold its own in the power department as compared to the 850. At speed, its 150 ponies are delivered in a much more refined curve that ramps up, where the 850, with slightly more power, feels a bit more frantic on the fun flipper. Each get the job done nicely, just differently. There is a small weight penalty to pay for the four-stroke over the two. 24 pounds more for the turbo, according to Skidoo's advertised dry weight for the XRS, 37 pounds more for the Enduro. And I suspect each are a little understated when you add the increased volume of coolant and engine oil that stays in the sump. So I figure on a sled like the Enduro, it's about 45 pounds heavier on the skis over the 850 E-Tech. A bit of a penalty you feel when it comes time to manhandle the front of the sled around the shop or at full send going into the corners. But I think this extra heft is totally acceptable by riders who want the turbo. And besides, it's not the weight that's the problem, it's whether or not the chassis can handle that extra weight. Luckily though, the G4 is up to the task. Out front, the RAS3 is controlled by compression and rebound adjustable KYB shocks that do an excellent job of controlling the front end through the range of speed or size of hit. Out back is the R-Motion skid with KYB Pro 40 shocks, center and rear, along with the floorboard mounted quick adjust system. The Enduro is a more mellow option with HPG pluses out front. Out back is the R-Motion skid with HPG front arm shock and rear arm air ride, adjustable through five preload settings right from the bars. The Enduro is positioned firmly in the crossover market and equipped for riders who want to explore the more adventurous off-trail experience while giving up very little for pack trail performance. This XRS is kind of known as the consumer race version of the MXZ, but it's still tuned for us mere mortal riders. It's an improvement over the base MXZ suspensions and a good fit for those of us looking for that little extra control and adjustability without the super harsh ride of a race suspension that's meant to take a pounding on the track. A four-stroke turbo may not be my first choice when it comes to a ditch-banging sled like the Renegade XRS here, especially when there's an 850 two-stroke option out there, but that's just me. Now, if we're talking about a touring sled, like a Grand Touring or something like that, I would option the turbo, no questions asked. But that's also kind of the genius of offering two engines in the same chassis, is that you get to option what's best for you as a rider. What could make things more interesting in the future is an increase in power output of the 900 Ace Turbo. I'm no fortune teller, but I think BRP has left plenty of room to tune up the output of this mill. Another clue to the future of this power plant is the beefed up internals over the old 900. Inside the engine, there's stronger piston and connecting rod assemblies, increased capacity in the cooling and oiling systems, even the compression has been lowered to work better under high boost levels. Even the turbo itself is a clever piece of work. Super short runners cut down on turbo lag and the tight packaging of the turbo right up against the engine allow for it to have a home inside the G4 chassis. The boost charge is even intercooled by an air to air exchanger mounted up on the nose, which is also the reason for the aggressive grill work that contributes to the turbo's badassery. So I gotta believe there's good things coming, but there's one thing on this current machine that just bothers me. Now it's a bit of a small detail, but I don't like this throttle or the drive-by wire throttle system. There seems to be a delay in the response from tip-in to the engine building RPM. This gets a little unpredictable the slower you go, especially in eco mode. At speed, it's not too bad. The throttle feels more normal, but around the shop or slow in and out of the trailer, I don't like it. I mean, I like the concept. The throttle's got a really light throttle pull, plus the housing. Well, it can be reversible, so you can pull it with your fingers if your thumb gets sore. I also like the fact that the progression changes as you switch this machine between sport, standard, and econo modes. I just don't like the way the programming has this delay built into it. Maybe it'll be something that'll become more intuitive over time and miles ridden. It's just for now, I have a bit of a dislike for it. Now, aside from that one little thing, I do like the overall pairing of the Rotax 900 Ace Turbo in each sled it can be found in. In fact, it turns out I liked it more than I ever expected I would have. It's fun, it's fast, it looks awesome, 
and I'm looking forward to every bit of boosted snow I can blow at the back of this baby. Got another bee in there. <laughs>
the device will uh, go through a self-test. It'll flash uh, its lights for a few minutes. Um, and then you can see that the power light is flashing, letting you know that the device is moving. To test, just actually move it uh, and you should receive an email or a text message. One of the unique features of Spot Trace is after 20 minutes, the lights will go out, but the device is still operating. If you just lightly press the button, the lights will come back on. Its geofence is approximately 10 meters. So once it moves out of that, that 10 meter range, uh, it will start sending its new movement alert to uh, let you know that it has started moving and then it'll go into tracking mode and will send um, waypoints at a specified interval that you're able to follow along using Google Maps from any computer or, or device that has access to uh, the internet. Spot Trace will be able to transmit through any of the fiberglass on this snowmobile, but a great handy location for you to be able to reach is right in the front cubby, right here. So when install Spot Trace on this sled, one thing to keep in mind is the antenna that does all the transmitting is underneath the Spot logo, so it's going to be need to be facing up. Snap it into the cradle. Install it. You're ready to ride. Over the last few weeks, we've seen more than a few posts on social media about people losing their sleds when they're out riding. So if you're out on the road, make sure to lock your junk up because you never know when there's some turd out there willing to take your stuff. Till next week, ride safe and we'll see you on Snowmobiler Television. STV has been brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. On this week's show, we've got Dogs. buddies. Buddies. That's you.